always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. What's shaking, everybody? Welcome to the GSMC Entertainment Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. Your faithful, loyal, well, slightly tired host, Alex, here for you. All things entertainment. Uh, been an interesting week on my end, getting back to work at the restaurants, um, and it seems like, uh, I don't want to jinx it, but it seems like uh, there will be some resurgences uh, of filmmaking in L.A., I- People are people are starting to take some risks, so I'm hoping that auditions uh, for acting start to get in full flow. L.A. has been uh, a special place, <laughs> to say the least, during this pandemic, so um, I'm hoping that things start to take a turn, and it looks like they are, so I'm eager and excited and, uh, and hopeful. So that would be lovely. Today, we are going to get into uh, get, get into some fun things. We're going to start off with... Uh, talking about some Jake Paul madness. I don't know if you guys have seen what's going on with him, but uh, we'll get into it in just a moment. He got uh, raided. His house got raided in Calabasas. Um, and I have a little a little anecdote about Jake Paul for you. And then we're going to talk about the cancellation of one of my favorite shows of the year, and that is uh, Hulu's High Fidelity starring Zoe Kravitz. What a shame. We will get into all things concerning that. And then we're going to talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about the restaurants, you know, because uh, it's it's a form of entertainment. Going out right now is is rare and few and far and in between. So I thought it would be good to talk uh, to talk restaurants um, in, in major cities, basically, you know, L.A., New York, those sort of things. And then... I'm gonna finish you off with uh, a little a little Mulan discussion um, and and how you you might be able to to watch it. So first, let's get into the Jake Paul of it all. Um, Jake Paul. I don't know if you are familiar with Jake Paul, but if you're not, your daughter probably is, or your son probably is, and I think that's a problem. But I'm gonna take it back. Jake Paul um, is sort of a an ins- an influencer. A YouTuber, um, constantly filming his whole life in a grand theatrical, let's just call a spade a spade, slightly, um, uh, you know, douchey way. He's he's not the he's not the kindest dude. He's not the best dude. He kind of thinks his poop don't stink, um, and you can just kind of get that from from how he behaves uh, in his videos and in his life. He does crazy stuff just to say he did them, just to um, just to be front and center. There's no real talent. There's no real uh, story behind any of what he does. He just kind of is. Um, let me take it back a little bit. Uh, basically... I, w- I did one episode of a Disney Channel show called Bizarre Vark a couple of years ago. And uh, the way that these shows work is, you know, it's mostly kids on, on Disney. So it's very, very regimented, nine to five hours. Um, it's honestly a great gig because uh, you show up, you rehearse, you do it, and you're you're out in... in less than six to eight hours and usually on film sets like you could you know be called at 2 a.m you could be called at 5 a.m you could call but no here you're called at nine they have to be out they can only work certain hours there's no overtime because they have to go to school um and it's great but so i show up for what is called the table read of the episode which basically is when the whole cast uh for the episode and the director and the crew, um, by the crew I mean like the producers, they sit and they watch and they listen, um, and uh, and I'm waiting and I get there and I get a very nice in- introduction from the producers. This is Alex. He'll be playing Doctor Trafoni, which basically I played this intro to Dinosaurs Doctor um, uh, and taught these these uh, these students. But I had a very soft boring voice. Anyway, that was my character. It was very fun. I had a great time in the episode. But 
Jake Paul. So I show up, I sit down, um, you know, excited, a little nervous, even though I know it's a kid's show, even though I know like I'm the adult in the room, you know, whenever you're, whenever you're new to someone's home, it always feels a little bit, uh, uncomfortable and confusing and, and you're just trying to find your footing a little bit. Um, so I sit down, I get some water, I'm looking over the script, say hi to a bunch of people, and uh, then the clock kind of rolls, and I'm wondering, when are we going to start this? Because these usually start pretty on time. You know, we started at 1 o'clock, um, waiting, waiting, One fifteen rolls around, uh, kids are kind of talking, kind of, I'm hearing rumblings of, this is how it goes, this is normal. One thirty rolls around. Oh my God! Where the hell is he? I don't know who they're looking for, but I'm thinking this is the most unprofessional thing I've ever seen in my life. Where the hell is this this actor, this person, this 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 guy who is a series regular making making great money? I mean, you make great money being a series regular, even on a Disney Channel show. You make you know somewhere around hundreds of thousands of dollars for the freaking year. So. Uh, where the hell is this guy? And then 145 rolls around. Still no show. 150, finally, after 40, 45 minutes of lateness, Jake Paul walks in. He is one of the leads of this show and walks in, sits down, doesn't apologize, and just says, you guys ready? And the room laughs at this. Because this guy just seems to be able to do whatever he wants. What I didn't know was that he was previously fired and this was going to be his last episode. So he didn't really care uh, because he was fired. Because he's not professional. Because he doesn't really care. Because, you know, he's just a kid who has the ability to go into a candy store, and pick whatever he wants. That's Jake Paul in a nutshell. That may be my opinion of him, but that's what he purports in his life going forward. So, back to uh, back to what's happening with him today. So, gets fired from Bizarre Vark, continues his stream of, of madness through the last year or so. Every so often, Jake Paul pops into uh, the media, and you're wondering... At least I'm wondering, why the hell is this guy in... Why do we care? Why is he getting a New York Times article? Why is he getting an LA Times article? So I click the article, much to my chagrin, and I see that his house was raided in Calabasas. Now, I go back a little bit, and I think to myself, how the hell did we get here? So I Google that, and I see that he had a massive house party in his Calabasas mansion, and I just think to myself, how the hell does this kid get away with all of this stuff? And I couldn't believe it. Hundreds of people showed up to this house party. Hundreds of people during a pandemic, during a time when we need to be vigilant, especially in L.A. L.A., the co- coronavirus is is an absolute nightmare right now. Um, I'm worried for my life being working in a restaurant. Not my life, my livelihood. I'm being as safe as humanly possible um, throughout my entire life. And the fact that this kid is throwing a party with hundreds of people at his Calabasas swanky mansion while thousands are are dying and thousands are sick is just so ignorant and irresponsible and so it continues on i mean the fbi is investigating criminal acts surrounding his incident at a scottsdale fashion square so what did they do they raided his house in calabasas and they found a ton not a ton they found quite a few Firearms, multiple firearms, and they confiscated them, and they're continuing. Um, they're continuing this, this, uh, 
this investigation and uh it's it's ongoing and it is it is pretty wild and like i said this kid i mean he's been given a gift and and so i'll continue i'll continue that story so bizarre vark happens i i shoot the episode honestly he wasn't mean he was perfectly kind he gets through his final episode kind of doesn't say anything um he you know he's occasionally filming himself in the middle of the set just kind of like talking about how this is his last episode and how he's sad and all this stuff which was a complete lie because then he went on later to say that he uh how he hated bizarre Bark and how it like stunted his growth or whatever so i'm an actor in la right so i'm i'm in moments i'm working on sets in moments i'm I'm shooting something and in moments I'm not, I'm not quite, I'm not quite at the place where I'm, I'm, uh, completely sufficient, uh, as an actor in, in TV and film. So I also worked at a restaurant. I was working at the Palm in downtown Los Angeles. And of course, a week after we shoot this, Jake Paul and Logan Paul and his entire family rent out, um, the, the like back room in, at the Palm and I, of course, am told to wait on him. And I'm thinking to myself, this is one of the most embarrassing moments of my entire life. And you know what? It really wasn't because they embarrass their, themselves a lot more than I do. I mean, just filming themselves constantly, breaking things on the floor. like, And these parents don't seem to care. And I'm not going to judge these parents, but I am going to judge these parents. I mean, I, I just the the entitlement the the selfishness and i'm going to say it even as a white person i can say this the white privilege that these people stand for is so rampant it's crazy they're not talented they're not interesting they're not that smart they've figured out how to film themselves constantly they have a ton of money from their parents and they've turned daddy's money into their own and you know what Kudos to them for that because that's – honestly, that's part of the white American dream is taking money from your family and turning that into more money. Look at the president of the United States. I digress. The point is Jake Paul is a, is a fake. He's a phony. And I, I, I'm looking at the landscape of what what kids are watching, what kids, who, what kids are following, who – who they're looking up to, and I gotta tell you, the Pauls should not be near the top of the list, and somehow, some way, this 20, I think he's 23-year-old kid who's getting guns confiscated from his Calabasas mansion is still just, I mean, he tweeted out, he tweeted out today, as, as, of, as of today when we're recording this, he tweeted out that Mike Tyson mentioned him in in something i mean he's still getting the merit that he doesn't deserve because he's somewhat of a household name for his youtube channel for his vlog for his sort of bs content that just is so unexciting and unappealing uh to to anybody who is looking for any form of entertainment that has anything with a pulse with a heart um I I honestly what I hope for Jake Paul is that he finds some help that he finds that he 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 hits a rock bottom that he doesn't get killed but that he he has a near death experience that brings him to some kind of moment that makes him think huh I need to stop what I'm doing I'm not setting a good example for kids going forward cuz they're looking at you dude they're looking at you and they're thinking, I want to be like that guy. I want to jump off of this thing. I want to talk about this thing. I want to I want to have guns too. And that is the problem with mainstream media right now, with with YouTube, with Instagram, with Twitter, with TikTok that these kids are seeing this massive celebrity who doesn't really deserve to be a celebrity again. Look at the president of the United States. Same deal. Did he deserve all that he got? No. Manifest destiny? No. Same with Jake Paul. There is no reason that we should be that this that this child 
that this untalented fool should be getting the publicity that he consistently gets. We don't, we don't talk, we don't say the name of, uh, shoot, mass, mass, mass shooters. We don't, we don't say their names. We shouldn't be saying Jake Paul's name over and over again. The guy is perpetuating the COVID crisis. The guy has multiple firearms. The guy is involved in a bunch of crap that kids should not be looking up to. And, and I just, I've had enough of this dude. And I think, I, I hope that he realizes at some point that he is not the bee's knees, that he is an absolute tool who needs to, to check himself. And I hope that the world starts to check himself and that these kids start to realize he's not the real deal. He's a phony. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Everybody, welcome back to the GSMC Podcast, entertainment style, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. Again, I'm your host, Alex Alte. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, so, Zoe Kravitz found this baby of high fidelity. I don't know if you've seen the original film. If you haven't, stop listening, go watch the movie, come back, and then listen to this segment, and then go watch the show. Uh, the movie originally stars John Cusack, Jack Black, uh, a couple others. It is a feel-good, based on the book by Nick Hornby, um, High Fidelity. Um, it is just such wonderfully rich candy for anybody who's a romantic, anybody who's had their heart broken. Um, and it's hilarious. And it's highly enjoyable. Um Great, great, great movie. I've seen it probably 20 plus times at this point. Um, I just adore it and it's one of the best movies of the 90s. I think 90s. Let me, let me double check on that, but I think it's the 90s. Um, the show was originally, had a, had an interesting trajectory of getting to, to, uh, to streaming. Uh, it was originally pegged to go to Disney Plus. Which wouldn't make much sense um, for them because they they kept it sort of in the rated R uh, sphere. They kept it very real and raw and dirty, um, and uh, the filmmaking is, is it's very New York. It's very dark and grays and and um, all about the music and it's brash and like I said, very New York <laughs> um, and. So they decided, you know what, screw that. We, um, we're we not going to put it on Disney+. Plus. We're going to put it on our, our, our platform that is more for indie content. We're going to put it on Hulu. Great. Put it on Hulu. Um, incredible reviews. R- raving reviews for this show, creatively, uh, artistically, acting-wise, uh, filming-wise. I thought that they, they took the trope of... I don't know if you know if if you haven't seen High Fidelity, there'll be some spoilers. Uh, essentially, it's the five um, relation like it starts with like two camera, the five uh, most important influential heartbreaks of um, our lead's life. And in the movie, it's John Cusack. In the show, it's Zoe Kravitz. Um, 
And it's sort of her trials and tribulations of her dating life while trying to maintain a record store in New York City um, called Champion Records. And it's just a damn blast. The music's phenomenal. The acting's great. The writing is superb. Um, the filmmaking's great. It's just, it, it's, it feels so good watching this show. It's like a warm blanket. Not in the same way like Mrs. Maisel is, but in a way that is just, just awesome. Um, it's, it's so great. By the way, High Fidelity, the movie I was way off, came out in 2000. Holy crap. Did not know that. That's crazy. Feels like it's an 80s movie. That's really cool, actually. Anyway, the show takes you on a journey of, uh, wonderful proportions with great characters, a really wonderful arc, um, and... Again, it got great reviews, and at a time when all we're looking for is content, and people are, you know, starved for feel-good, fun, romantic, will-they-won't-they, great stuff, High Fidelity was at the tops. I mean, you got, you got like, um, I mean, off the dome, you got like the Maisels, you got like Fleabag, you got like normal people, but High Fidelity was, had flash and fun and style. And Zoe Kravitz was at, honestly at the top of her game. I've never seen her this good in anything. I loved what she was doing. She was smart. She was witty. She was quick. And she was easy. She had, she had comfort on that screen looking into that lens right down the barrel. Just, just really, really, really showed what she's capable of and how she can carry a show. Um, you know, we'd seen her do, uh, Big Little Lies and a bunch of other little things, um, where she plays sort of smaller roles and zen roles and things like that. But this is where we got to see her vulnerability and her sexiness. My god, is Zoe Kravitz gorgeous and, and just, just a, an alluring figure. I mean, with those two parents, like, how do you not have, just scream sex the moment you walk on screen? Um, which, spoiler alert, she does. Watch High Fidelity. She's fantastic. Um, but the will days, the won't days, you know, like has that sort of love life feel of like trying to figure out the mystery of who she ends up with. Um, and Jake Lacey, uh, who honestly prior to this, I didn't love, but he's been a part of some really good stuff, including the, again, uh, short lived brilliant series, I'm Dying Up Here, which was on Showtime, which again begs the question, can these shows that are, um, niche shows, that have this sort of feel good thing survive, but I think this is different. I'm dying up here. It was on Showtime. Um, was a very niche seventies comedy club, kind of based on, um, uh, you know, the, the comedy store, uh, his, uh, um, how that sort of came to be. Um, and it was also a phenomenal show. I mean, in the last season, the final episode was watched by 200,000 people. And let me tell you something. Ya boy was watching. He was one of 200,000 people. It was just, it was just a show that didn't get out there. And it was a shame because that was also one that was incredibly acted and really well written. And it had a bit of cheese to it. It, it, it sort of fell off toward the end there. But overall, it was really, really meaty and, and well done. This never fell off. Episode one through episode 10, it found its stride. It, the actors gelled incredibly well. And again, Jake Lacey and Zoe Kravitz's chemistry was excellent, um, as sort of her possible new real love interest. Um, and I think that this show fell because of COVID. It's, it feel, it smells like COVID. I was listening to the watch and Andy Greenwald was talking about this and I had an inkling, um, about it as well. If you haven't listened to the watch with Andy Greenwald and, uh, uh, Chris Ryan. Um, it is a really, really, uh, excellent podcast that I highly recommend in terms of entertainment. Um, it's where I get a lot of, a lot of ideas for what I'm going to do on the show. And, uh, yeah, this was one of them. High fidelity. Um, the COVID of it all is what they were talking about. And I'm going to talk about it too, because I agree that it costs a lot of money to shoot in New York. Um, and they really tried to do their best to keep it authentic to what New York feels like. And they did a great job with it. And unfortunately, that I think led to their demise. Because 
Zoe Kravitz was so on board for this. She was an EP. She she loved this. This was her baby. You know, she she kind of pulled it from, plucked it from uh, its two thousand birth and and brought it to now while while maintaining all of the sort of uh simplicity that it had back then and then adding just a few things and and changing the characters and obviously her being a a black woman um changed the entire dynamic and it made it so much better and so much more modern um and again during this time it would be such a great moment to watch to something feel good something something to to really latch into and enjoy um but yeah, I think the cost of shooting in New York, the worry that um, it might not uh, come back, and the fact that Disney is the owner of Hulu doesn't help at all because they they basically lost, I don't know, so I think upwards of, of billions of dollars this last quarter um, with the lack of releases in theaters and whatnot. So they had to cut, cut costs, and Hulu... Uh, decided, which is a, a subsidiary of Disney, like I said, they, they decided they had to cut the cord, even though the ratings were good, even though the reviews were great. Um, and it's a damn shame. I really hope that this show gets picked up somewhere else because it's just so individual, um, for what they're doing. You've, you've, you may have seen shows like this. There are shows out there that got renewed like this. Like I said, like Love Life, like Modern Love. Um, those shows do incredibly well. And I think High Fidelity was poised for seasons of great entertainment and were stuck with just one really, really strong season that I hope people get around to. Um, get around to watching uh some really great stuff throughout the entire season and i was i looked forward to it every week um my fiance and i would go home and watch it i highly recommend binging that um binging that show during this time with with a loved one if you're alone it also you know definitely promotes the the uh woe is me love love story uh of your past and that might feel good in moments too. So I highly recommend, I can't, I can't say it enough. I, I might even, hell, I might even start like a, a change.org freaking, freaking petition so that we can get this show back because I, I want it to go to another network. I would love it to end up on FX. I could see it there. Um, which would <laughs> ironically end up back on Hulu. Um, I just, it's a damn shame. Why are like sh- shows like Little Voice are coming out, which I love Sarah Bareilles. Don't get me wrong, but it's so cheesy, so cheap, so meh. And like when the music scene is so vibrant and interesting, and High Fidelity really encapsulates that. And I just I just can't speak enough to how good it is. And I I you gotta watch it, watch the damn show, and sign my change dot org petition please. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. get into a little bit of convo about what's going on in restaurants in major cities and uh, what I've seen um, from guests, from the perspective of the waiter, 
as I, uh, that is my day job, I wait patiently with mask and shield and gloves for hours. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk about all that, but real quick, I, I, the, yesterday, uh, we're recording this on Saturday the 8th. Uh, yesterday, on uh, Friday, I was, I was setting up at work and, you know, in my mask and, and, and folding napkins or whatever the hell I was doing at the beginning. Um, and I had heard prior to this that Cardi B dropped a, a new song and then, all of a sudden at work, my, my manager was like, you know what, screw it. I'm going to play this Cardi B song. What is this song called? Oh, it's called WAP. All right, let's, let's see what it's about. Uh, they put it on and let me tell you guys, it is dirty as hell. Oh my good God, it's dirty. And she doesn't even try to hide it. I mean, if you, uh, this is, this is a family friendly show, so I'm not going to get into, uh, what WAP stands for, but if you want to Google WAP Cardi B and, uh, type in, type in lyrics. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, not for children, but it is hilarious. Let me tell you, they played it. Everyone's dancing around while we're, while we're, we're all laughing about how dirty it is and saying, good God, Cardi B, you must be a freak. Holy crap. Um, it's kind of reminiscent of, of a, of a Missy Elliott song, um, way back when, if you will, except even more explicit. Um, and we, so, so they play that song and then I just wanted to say later, later, uh, in the night it comes back on while there's a full restaurant of families, of, of couples coming out, of, of people, you know, talking after not seeing each other in months because they haven't been out to dinner in months and they're eating their fish and their cavatelli with pork sausage and black truffle and they're spending hundreds of dollars and then, Cardi B comes on while they're taking a bite of their bronzino, and I just found that highly ironic and hilarious, but I digress. Um, restaurants, massive form of entertainment, massively important uh, for an industry um, in major cities uh, especially, um, but kind of all around. It, it promotes uh people getting together it it gets people uh loose with alcohol and food and i don't need to tell you this is freaking restaurants everybody loves restaurants if you don't like going to a restaurant i mean you're not really a human being even even people who are reclusive like like to sit alone and eat a chicken parm like it's just it's one of the best ways to to let loose and enjoy and hang out with friends and it's been taken for us, from us for quite a while, um, due to Corona. Um, but they're coming back. And, uh, in New York, they are back to indoor dining. Um, and I have friends who work in restaurants in New York who, you know, are wearing masks and are wearing shields and are wearing gloves and are feeling okay. Um, and are making money and are back to work and doing all right. Um, but now that the, uh, you know, EDD money has sort of subsided a little bit, um, it is getting more difficult for people who don't have a ton of money to go out to dinner. So unless you work in a restaurant in an affluent area, like thankfully I do, uh, I live in LA, uh, live in LA and work at a restaurant that is one of the, one of the better restaurants in, in LA. It's called Bestia. It's, it's incredible. Uh, highly recommend it. Not a plug for you to come there, but, but if you're in LA, uh, come there. Um, I'll hook you up. But I mean, you got, you got rich Orange County people going. You got Laguna people coming. You got, you got people who, who aren't really affected nearly as much as, by Corona as others still able to go out and eat. Um, but there are so many restaurants that are just going down right now. Um, left and right in LA and in New York. I mean, if they weren't making money off of the PPP loan that they were getting, I know that this is very inside baseball and not very exciting. I'll get into the dynamic of, of, uh, of what it feels like to be in a restaurant right now in just a moment. Um, but if you're not making money 
right now as a restaurant, you're, you're scratching and clawing to, to pay your rent. And especially if you're in like fine dining, it's really hard to maintain those costs. It costs a lot of money and you don't realize that as a customer. Um, and I didn't even realize that as a server. I mean, it costs a lot of money to maintain a restaurant and most restaurants operate with very little margin for error. Um, so I mean, it's it's just really sad. You're seeing restaurants and bars, especially. I mean, bars can't stay open because they don't serve food. So in LA right now, completely shut down. Um, but in terms of restaurants, what I've seen, people coming in really excited to eat. It's all outdoor dining, so it feels a bit like like Europe. Um, we have a, a lovely parking lot section with a nice tent and carpets and plants surrounding it, so it doesn't feel like a a uh, a parking lot. Um, but it's all outdoors, so people are people are feeling a, a bit safer. Um, everything is very is six feet apart. All the tables are six feet apart. I don't go near a table when I'm waiting tables. I'm wearing a mask. Like I said, I'm wearing a mask. I'm wearing a shield. I'm wearing gloves. Um, and it feels okay. At the beginning, I was like, what the hell am I doing? There's no way I can do this. I got to get out of here. Babe, we're moving in with our parents and we're never coming out of that hole because coronavirus is everywhere. But recently I've come out of that sort of, uh, sort of thinking and realized like you got to live your life. You got to, you got to move forward. Um, and honestly, it's been the best thing for me. I'm, I'm, enjoying listening to to music at work i'm dancing around because it's a bit slower because there's you know we're not allowed to have a full capacity restaurant so i keep my distance i'm singing to myself i'm talking to friends through mask and shield at work uh connecting with people who i hadn't before so on that end it's been great for me it's a slog i'm not gonna lie wearing a mask and a face shield at, at a restaurant you know while you're while you're serving drinks to people who are trying to be a bit more carefree feels really counterintuitive. It feels strange. It feels, it feels wrong. Um, at first, but I'm happy to be working. It's, it's, it's giving me a regimen, um, making me feel, you know, like I, I'm a part of society. And for the people who are coming in, um, they're so happy to be there. They're see, you know, I hope for the most part that they're being safe and choosing wisely who they're going to dinner with. Maximum they're allowed where we we are allowed to see it is six people at a time uh together. So I'm hoping that these couples have vetted each other um and they know where they're at in terms of in terms of their um their status with if they you know have the virus or not. Um, I hope that that's clear. Um but you know, you got families coming together, you got, you got, you got friends coming together and they're drinking and they're eating food. Um, and they seem to be really enjoying it. Uh, I've talked to a bunch of people who work at other restaurants in LA and they're saying the same thing that at first, you know, when they were working there, um, they felt like, what the hell am I doing? This is the dumbest idea ever. Why did I come back to work? I should get another job i should figure something else out but now it's a livelihood and we're all just trying to survive right now and honestly it feels good on my end to entertain people that's always been what i've wanted to do and to have the ability to make people relax a little bit in a relatively safe environment like i said it's all outdoors so the likelihood of spreading the virus is much much less if you have it i stay away from the table i stay very safe um and it feels it feels okay i'm providing for my myself and my fiance and we're moving to a house and it just feels it feels like we are able to progress in this world under these dire, dire circumstances that I hope change. I was talking to a friend in New York who is, is in finance, uh, sorry, is in real estate. Uh, he's a good buddy of mine since I was like six. He's been going to restaurants out in the West Village and out in, uh, um, in like, uh, meatpacking area of New York, which is an awesome area. And he says, you know, he's been to Europe a bunch and he, he said it feels like Europe genuinely because the virus is, is has gone down a lot. And they got, they got, um, the cobblestone streets in the West Village and these, these people have seating out there 
and everything is distant and it feels like, you know, feels like France in, 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 in the nineties, he said to me, where people are just smoking cigarettes outside, talking and, 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 uh, enjoying their lives. Um, and I think that that's, that's, for a while I was very anti that, um, everyone should stay inside, everyone should, should, should dumb down this virus. And then I realized that it's not the outdoor dining that is perpetuating this virus. Um, you know, you have to wear a mask when you walk in, you have to wear a mask when you get up from the table. So the, again, the likelihood of you spreading this and, and thankfully, as far as I know, in New York, especially, um, there, there's no, they don't take no crap. Like if you, if you ain't, if you aren't wearing a mask, if, if, if the restaurants aren't, um, abiding by the rules of the CDC, they get shut down. So everyone is behaving accordingly in New York and LA for a while. They were in LA, but now they are. And, um, it's great in terms of, in terms of how they're following the guidelines and, and a form of, of entertainment and getting out that feels relatively safe. Now, I, I don't think people should be, you know, combining parties and, and, and getting with, you know, families. I think it should be like your bubble that you're going out to dinner with if you go out to dinner at all. Um, but, who am I to judge that? You know, like I, I can't judge how you live your life. I'm um, while you're providing me with a livelihood. So I appreciate that. I personally don't plan on going out to dinner for a while. I'm going to do takeout. I'm going to go to a park. I'm going to sit in the backyard, um, and really maintain my distance. Cause I don't know what's going on with these other people around me. And I'm kind of a hypochondriac. I mean, I'm a Jew from New York. What do you expect? I'm a major hypochondriac, but I'm glad that people are finding ways to be entertained that are safe and are un Jake Paul like. There's no need to have a ma- massive gathering. There's no need to have a massive wedding. There's no need to get together with, uh, friends and family sans mask. If you want to do, if you want to do something relatively risque, go out to dinner. That's about it. I, I, I think we all need to take a second and find entertainment in ways at home. Or in a safe environment, in an outdoor environment like that. Um, and I think that, you know, <clears throat> people are starting to, to, to catch wind of this virus ain't going anywhere. So we can't, we can't do outrageous things to entertain ourselves. Another great way is, is through a drive-in movie. I mean, it seems to be, be coming back, which is really cool. I think that that's, that's so cool to be able to see like Jaws, uh, in your car. Um, if I was 16, that would be, I, you know, I'd be, I'd be Dawson leering it up and, and, and driving with Joey Potter right to the drive-in. That's where I would be. That would be my number one choice. But, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker. I'm, I'm a sap. Um, so yeah, I think the restaurants are, are a great thing. I, I, I feel for, for places that have to shut down, um, that, that can't stay open because, because people aren't frequenting them, but for the restaurants that are surviving, um, please go to them and be safe, um, order takeout from them and they will elevate your entertainment for the evening. Uh, let's just say you, you order pickup from your favorite Italian place and then you go home and you're sitting with the kids and what do you do? You're going to pop on Disney Plus's Mulan. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. That's a, that's a hell of an evening. That's, that's a hell of an evening. And, uh, and you know what? It's cost effective because all you're doing is, is ordering a movie and, and having some dinner and it's family fun for everybody. I think that that's great. Um, yeah, again, I, I am all in favor of staying safe. If you want to stay home, order takeout. Why not? Seems like a great idea. Golden State Media Concepts bring you... 
Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. That's right, folks. Mulan is coming to you on Disney+. Plus. Very exciting. Very exciting. Quite con- a little bit controversial, though. Um, so, backtracking. Mulan was supposed to come out uh, in the summer. And, spoiler alert, coronavirus happened. And it can't. Um, so like a lot of things, like a quiet, like a quiet place got pushed a year. Tenet, the, the Christopher Nolan, uh, really anticipated movie keeps getting pushed month to month to month because Christopher Nolan is snobby and, and honestly, he's smart. I mean, his movies belong on a, on a large screen and you can't really, uh, fault him for Wanting you to experience it only that way. Personally, I'd like to spend 50 bucks and watch Tenet from the comfort of my home. But that's one man's opinion. That's one man's opinion. And uh, I think that you could probably find a way to um, have it be available on VOD. And then when we are allowed to congregate and really comfortably see it in theaters, throw it up in theaters again, because you know what? He's an auteur and much like, uh, Quentin Tarantino. If you, we're going to go, we're going to go see it again. We're going to go see it or, or you will have spent 50 bucks to pay for it the first time. So I think that it would be worth the shot of putting it on VOD before doing that. But who am I? Anyway, I digress. Mulan. Uh, this film is highly anticipated, went through a lot of different, um, iterations, a lot of backlash happened from Mulan, uh, I mean, the Mulan, the move, the animated movie has been getting a lot of, of flack over the years for the appropriation that it has, uh, for the fact that, you know, it's white people, a bunch of white people voicing a bunch of Asian people, I think that that's incredibly messed up. Um, especially given today's climate, but let's be real. The movie's great. And, um, I'm probably, probably still going to sing that song for the rest of my life because it's ingrained in me. But regardless, um, this movie will do a much, much better job of, of, uh, being authentic and trying from what I hear, trying to tell the relatively, uh, historical version of Mulan and, Unfortunately, or fortunately, for, for depending on your take, um, it's going to be without music, uh, and that's you know, that for me, a musical theater buff who who loves you know singing reflection in in the mirror, um, or in the shower, or in the car, or at work, or um, you know, on a hike, uh, is going to be a little upset. But regardless, um. I think that this is a great idea. This is a really smart idea. And honestly, people are like, whoa, it's going to cost $30 plus my $5.99 or $4.99, however much my subscription is for, um, for Disney Plus to watch Mulan. That's crazy. That's so crazy. I disagree. I completely disagree. Um, I think that it is a very smart decision on Disney's part. Like I said, they've been purging money. Um, they've been losing money left and right. Their, their quarterly, uh, earnings were, were put up because Disney, you know, they make all their money on the theme parks. That's where they make their hay. And guess what folks? Disneyland ain't open. Disney world is open, but that's because Florida is crazy. Um, but a ton of people are not going, not, not the way they used to flock. You're not getting, you're not getting, uh, you're not getting, you know, travelers from across the world 
all over the place coming to Florida right now where the, the mecca of coronavirus is. No. So they have to find ways to make money and they put a lot of stock into, into Mulan being, being sort of a tentpole film for them for the year. Um, and all right. So it costs $30 to rent Mulan. You're going to, like I said in the previous segment, get some dinner, get some pizzas, say, say, get some Domino's pizzas even, you know, spend freaking 20 bucks on three large pies. Come on home, spend another 30 bucks for the entire family. You got entertainment for $50. That's a steal. That is a steal. Two and a half hour film for, for kids. To, to stay entertained while, while you, you might stay entertained too. What an exciting, exciting thing. 30 bucks. It's going to be also very, very interesting to see, um, <clears throat> to see what it's, what it's going to be, you know, to see how, how people are going to take to it. Are people going to, are people going to spend $30 to watch this movie? I know I am. Um, I know my sister is because let's be real, we haven't stopped singing Mulan since we were six. Um, but for the rest of the world, I don't know. Um, and it, you know, I think, I think they looked at, at things like Hamilton and said, holy crap, this people really need fresh new things that they had been excited about and had been an eager for, um, and that we can drop, um, like a bomb and excite people, um, entertainment wise. And Mulan is one of them. It comes out September 4th. You can buy it for 30 bucks. Um, you know, I'm not sure how long you get to hold on to it. I'm not sure how many viewings you get to watch. I would imagine it's a 48 hour thing. Um, like, like they do with most VOD things. Um, but it's interesting. I wonder if this is going to be the trend more and more. I think it should be. Um, it's a dangerous precedent though, because, you know, you're looking at $30, um, $30 from the comfort of your home versus, you know, 15 bucks in LA. If you're going to the arc light, 18, 20 bucks a ticket, but most places probably around 10 to 12. I, I, I've, I Googled is the average price of a movie ticket these days. So, you know, you're basically getting you're spending three tickets worth of 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 uh of money to to see it in the comfort of your home and i think that that's incredibly worth it especially if you're watching with multiple people which i imagine they are thinking people will do um as far as movie theaters go i mean they are in dire straits i don't know how these how these companies are going to maintain i know that uh you know, I was, I was looking on IndieWire the other day and, uh, people are devastated. You know, they were, they were anticipating, um, Mulan and Tenet to be sort of tent poles for the summer for their, for their theaters to make, to make their hay, to make their money, to get through this, this awful time, hoping that, uh, they'll be able to, to do distant, distant showings. Um, and it just doesn't look like that's the case. I think that, I think that it's, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes, especially in, in a, in a city like LA. I, you know, I drive past the Vista, which is, has been around since I believe like 1920 something. Um, and it's just says to be continued, uh, hoping that it'll come back, uh, eventually cause it's, it's a staple of Los Angeles and I love going to the movies. The movies are amazing. It's, 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 it's a different experience going to the movies than watching in your home. Movie theater popcorn, no matter no matter the theater, is always going to be better uh, at a movie theater than at home. It just is. Um, that communal experience, that that first viewing of something with around surrounded by people that you don't know, um, really does elevate a film or elevate a uh, an experience, um, especially if it's going to be as theatrical as Mulan promises to be or as Tenet certainly promises to be. I mean, if you look at that trailer, holy crap, it looks crazy. Um, but I, I think that we're in a time where we got it. We got to, we got to try to get the entertainment out. And I am excited to spend $30 and watch Mulan from the comfort of my home. And I think, 
that options are king in the entertainment world right now. And if you have the option to watch at home, I think it should always cost a little bit more to have it in the comfort of your own home. Even when movie theaters come back, even when coronavirus, God willing, goes away in, let's hope, in the next minute. Um, I think it would be nice to be able to say, okay, I can go to the movie theaters. Um, I can spend 15 bucks on a ticket. Or my fiance and I can stay home and spend $45 on the movie um, to see at home. And I don't think that that is a bad option. I don't think that that is a wrong option. Um, believe me, I am somebody who's a purist when it comes to the arts, when it comes to theater, when it comes to film. Um, I love supporting my artists by going to the theaters. But if I can support my artists from the comfort of my own home, especially during a pandemic, I'm going to do that. Um, and I think we should all be on board for that. And I think that, you know, Disney is, is setting a precedent that, that, um, is gonna, is gonna have a ripple effect, I think, through the community, especially if it does well. If Mulan does well, I could see someone like Christopher Nolan possibly changing his tune because it's a two hour and something minute movie and, and there was issues because they couldn't, they couldn't, uh, air it in China. Uh, where things were looking good because they were saying it can't be more than 90 minutes in a theater because that's science. You can't, you can't spend more than 90 minutes around people or the, the likelihood of it spreading is higher. So I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. The, the studio is eating a ton of money with tenant right now and hoping that they can recoup that money when it does get released eventually. But I can see them doing a 180 on this 100%, and I think they should, and I hope Mulan sets a precedent for it. I, I'm, I'm very curious to see where this goes. If, if a film like A Quiet Place, the, the, uh, the quiet sort of, um, as obviously the title says, the quiet, um, thriller horror film that is A Quiet Place, uh, two, was set to come out, I believe, in May, and then they pushed it a whole year. I think they might change their tune if if Mulan does really well on Disney Plus, um, and they might release it on VOD. It does help that it it does fall under a platform, you know, like because looking for uh, looking for let's say a quiet place on um, on like Amazon or on you know Google Play or whatever or on VOD wherever you get your your wherever you purchase those movies or on iTunes. Um, you know, it's a little bit different. It has, it has an allure because it's like Disney Plus releases Mulan versus like, you can find, um, Suicide Squad on demand wherever you get movies. It just doesn't feel as, as streamlined. I think if you could find a way to streamline things, get things on a very specific platform, um, and make a deal with those platforms, we're gonna see some interesting, interesting moments in the movie business. Um, and will allow these larger tentpole movies to continue being made and to continue um, to can you continue being released, which is all we want. We just want more forms of entertainment. Um, and I hope I hope that people get on board. I hope that studios get on board. Um, and I hope that Mulan does really well. Not just because not just because I'm excited to see it, but because it's going to be great for um, representation. I mean, it's entire, it's an entirely, um, Asian cast, and that's so great. I'm really, really excited to see where this goes. Um, I'm excited to see, uh, if it is as authentic as they say it's going to be, if it's as dark as they say it's going to be, because, you know, most Disney movies get Disneyfied. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm ready to spend the $30 and enjoy Mulan from the comfort of my new home in Burbank, California. It's gonna be great. Um, and yeah, $30. $29.99 to be specific on Disney Plus. Get after it. Um, I know I will. And I think that, uh, everyone should. And I hope, that, and like I said, I hope that Tenant follows suit. Alright, folks. 
that's going to be it for me for the day. As always, like, subscribe, check out our Twitter, check out our Insta, and, uh, yeah, leave a little review on the pod. I think, I think, uh, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this, this entertainment biz. Um, we'll be back later, later in the week and, uh, stay entertained, stay safe and, uh, hug a dog. It'll make you feel better. All right. Take care. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program